Hello, it's Rhea. Wherever you are and whatever time it is, I hope you are enjoying yourself. And this is kind of irrelevant, but I have a face mask on right now, like those skincare masks. And like, it's- I don't know why I decided to put this on right as I'm trying to do a voiceover, but- Also, it doesn't help that like, this mask is like- like my eyes are too far apart for this mask and like same thing with my mouth it's like it's not syncing up well and i'm going through it and this was supposed to be relaxing and this is what i get for trying to multitask anyways hi <laughs> um in this video as you can see we are going to traverse the the world of watercolor and um i've already started um like with the i'm currently doing masking fluid which um, was kind of bold of me, but I just, I don't know, I really like the concept of it. Um, I think it's pretty cool, it's just, I really want to get down how to use it. Um, it's, uh, it's trial and error for me right now, but I do like this applicator, it's really convenient. Um, and then also, sorry, I didn't explain anything else, wow, okay. <laughs> So today, yeah, we're going to be doing a uh, watercolor and in this little sketchbook, the sketchbook is rather small, it's like the size of my hand, and my hand is pretty small, I think it's about like a three and a half inch by five, uh, but the brand is called Reflections Watercolor and it is a cold press 300 gram sketchbook. I just figured it'd be a nice cute little miniature sketchbook to practice watercolor in so far since I have not really used watercolor consistently enough to say that I know what I'm doing. Um, I do really like the medium, I just- there's never been a consistency. So I'm trying to get into it. Um, and yeah, so for this little um, illustration, I already have the sketch done. Um, but right now I'm preparing other things like the colors and as you can see right now I'm doing the uh, swatch or not swatches but like kind of like just trying to get a feel for things I guess like a warm-up um, the brushes that I'm using are almost all from the same pack I'll I can't think of the brand off the top of my head it's just like some kind of a I got it off of Amazon like this brush set and um, the only one that isn't from that set is from Windsor Newton, uh, Cotman. Windsor Newton, Cotman, you know. It's the light blue one that I end up using for the, uh, lining at the end. But, yeah. And then for the colors, I am using, uh, Windsor Newton, Cotman, like, that little, like, basic watercolor set where it's, like, a pan of, I think, 12 colors maybe and uh yeah i've had it for a while it's like my go-to because i don't really know what i like the most yet but uh yeah so sketch ready and now i'm just uh preparing to do the background so i'm laying down the uh water and um yeah no sorry i didn't well i guess i'm not sorry that i didn't do the sketch because i wasn't gonna add that in this time it felt kind of like unnecessary i didn't record it because i figured like the focus on this video is on watercolor so it's kind of like what's the point of me showing the sketch since like you guys have seen me sketching before <laughs> and it's not like this is like a really prestige like iconic piece or anything anyways it's it's all just like testing things out so yeah i left it out um and even with this footage alone it's like a lot of it um like there is some real time uh but i did have to like speed it up because filming watercolor is a new process for me <laughs> um painting it definitely takes a little bit longer than if i were just like casually sketching like i'm used to filming or you know things like that usually at most i've filmed myself using markers i think that's been the extent i don't really think i've done much painting this might be the first i don't know but uh, yeah, so I had the background laid down and then you see me doing the skin now and it's like yeah The whole time I'm just kind of trying out different things and trying to get a feel for like What the best flow is for me when it comes to using watercolor because there's a certain look that I'd like to accomplish But I'm not exactly sure how to go about it yet because it's always like like you can look at tutorials and do your research But I feel like the best way to learn at least for me is to do it just like hands-on trying to figure things out and so that's kind of what I'm doing here 
and um yeah you're gonna see like an oops moment later on with the first character that i did the skin for um <laughs> it's really interesting i basically am just like oh yikes is this salvageable but you'll see how it turns out um but yeah just trying different things i like the skin to look like um like a nice blended like nice blended tones i don't want it to be like harsh lines because i feel like it defeats the point of watercolor you know watercolor i feel like it's a medium where there's a lot of potential for like um mixing and layering colors but i haven't quite got down that nice like almost airbrushed look where it's like the colors blend together nicely i feel like it's hard for me to figure out how to balance um layering the colors on and that's the most fun part about watercolors so i am interested to see like um what i can do to improve on that uh it's just something over time but for right now i feel like i've had a good time just trying it out and doing it consistently i've um i think beforehand yeah at the very beginning of the video i showed like some sketches and just like painting that i've already done just trying to get a feel for things i mean the very first page is like an absolute wreck <laughs> so i didn't show that one but it's like yeah you know um warming up to it and i feel like another thing is trying to figure out like paper quality and how that affects things um, just like the characteristics of the paper that you're using cold press it seems to like the cold press is more textured I've learned and then um, the color is kind of like stain more I believe whereas I think hot press it allows you to like uh, it kind of sits on the paper a little bit longer because this paper oh my gosh the <laughs> one thing that I noticed with this sketchbook paper specifically is that once when you place a color down it sinks in like things dry quickly it's <laughs> it caught me off guard at first because I was like wait wasn't I supposed to like be able to like blend this or something and it's like no girl it just sunk in <laughs> I was like oh man so uh yeah I'm kind of like I've been learning like how to work with it and things like that then of course there is the paints and figuring out the water uh paint to water ratio uh the brushes and stuff uh to be honest I feel like I mean I like these brushes they, they seem pretty like chill I don't really know uh what qualifications people really want to look for in brushes i know some people say it's like the type of hair things like that but i've heard there's some pretty like good synthetic uh watercolor brushes to use as well i think this one uses like synthetic squirrel hair or something but i feel like in general with me using the brushes i'm not like too particular about anything just yet um I feel like it's pretty straightforward, you know, you can use like pointed brushes whenever you're trying to focus more on smaller areas, you use like the flat wide brush for like washes and things like that, so it really just depends, and really the only one that I pay a lot of attention to is the liner brushes, um, that's why I ended up purchasing like a whole separate brush for that, because I wanted to see like, hmm, if I get this will it make a difference, and um, so far I feel like it's um, like when I went, go to do the line art, uh, I feel like it, it, it does its job. I just have an issue trying to figure out like how to get enough water on the brush to make sure it goes smoothly instead of like dryly on there. Cause sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, I'm running out. Um, and then that's another thing too, like trying to make sure that I have enough water, um, or like enough of the color that I want to use. Cause oftentimes I feel like I don't make enough. For the said color and then i'm like oh yikes because <laughs> especially using this paper that dries quickly you want to make sure that you're using something that uh like you have enough uh to make it through one whole wash as opposed to just like you get through halfway and you're like oh i don't have any more color <laughs> so yeah the one on the left i feel like is coming out a little bit more how i would expect to color um skin whereas the one on the right like i said the oops moment is happening at this point i'm kind of like panicking because i'm like why is it coming out so like weirdly like splotchy and uneven what do i do but i do get around to fixing that so don't worry but for right now yes the one on the left i'm like like i said i'm trying to get that airbrushed look but i still feel like the cheeks came out a little bit more prominent and blush and even then i'm not sure why the blush came out so like 
orangey. I think I was like a little too worried because I feel like I'm so used to like trying to put blush on subtly and it's like a bright pink or a bright like it's a really like harsh red and I'm like oh god I didn't mean to do that <laughs> you know it's like a bad makeup situation so um yeah I usually try to focus on like just the regular shading areas so like around the nose the lips the uh, creases of the eyes and things like that and um yeah I just kind of follow like the same shading that I try to do digitally um, or in any other like medium just just you know layering it down and like I said that's the fun part of watercolor is like trying to see how much you can layer um, if you've seen my other videos where I'm doing like where I'm using alcohol markers uh, I feel like the layering aspect is just so fun because you can really see how far you can push things in dimension and depth which is weird because I do also like just like a flat look as well so um, there's much to explore and much to be enjoyed, but yeah, right now I'm just going in with the horns. Um, I'm trying to remember like much from this process. It's hard now that it's like, uh, like now that I'm watching it, I'm trying to remember like what exactly I was feeling while I was doing that. But, um, yeah, no. Uh, so basically what I do to fix the oops situation happening with the character on the right skin, I just go darker because that's the perk of watercolor if you if you are allowed to go darker like if it's not in a weird context or anything then it's like oh okay sure I mean and in this case it's like these characters aren't really like based off of anything um I think the character on the left I've drawn a character very similar before uh digitally you might have seen it on a procreate tour in the past but I feel like yeah I was just doodling so I just needed some models <laughs> And so these, like, I guess demon girls became my models, yeah, and, um, so yeah, adding melanin was no issue to me. Um, I think it turned out a lot nicer, if anything. I put on a second wash too, just to, like, solidify it a little bit more, but yeah, I feel like that might be the way to go, is to just do, because I'm thinking there's, like, two ways I can do it, where it's, like, I start and just use the negative space as like a highlight and um so like leave some areas genuinely white and then just sort of like slowly add like start from the eyes and the nose area like all the areas where there's shading like i talked about um start there first and then build it up or i just try to do like an overall wash and then i just add to those shaded areas again um yeah, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out, but it seems to like it seems to be coming together a little bit better than what it was like before I got to this point. <laughs> um, and yeah, I do have to be careful about like the staining though, because like I said, it's not this kind of paper. At least it's not the kind where you can like put down um, a color and like expect it to really um, blend like two seconds later like there's gonna be some kind of stain there if you just let it sit for even like the slightest amount of time so that's why um learning to work quickly is really important um at least for me using this paper um and in general i feel like it, it kind of helps sometimes it's the same with markers too it's like you have to make sure that you if you're covering the skin or like a wide area with one color you have to move quickly if you want to have that sort of seamless look where things are like nicely blended and not splotchy so yeah also for the paint since I don't think I've talked much about uh using these paints yet um I did explain though that like the Winsor & Newton set like I've pretty much used this uh the most when it comes to using watercolor because I just didn't really have that many other watercolors because if I am not using a medium consistently I feel like it's hard to justify buying other uh, supplies for it. However, <laughs> uh, this year, especially because I knew that I wanted to get into watercolor, I have uh, several brands just kind of sitting on my shelf waiting to be opened and used. So um, that's definitely a motivator in me starting watercolor again. And uh, yeah, I hope to highlight those as well. I'm thinking like in the future, since I do want to try to film more watercolor videos, despite it having like a weird 
Like, I don't know. Filming filming watercolor just feels so weird because I'm like, what do I highlight? Like, is it okay that some parts are sped up? Would it be better to have stuff real time but just like cut up completely? I don't know. Um, so I'm going to be trying out a lot of different things with it and just trying to have fun with it. But uh, yeah, no, I think like these paints are pretty nice. And uh, my only thing is I'm starting to realize like why people customize their own pans later on, like their own watercolor pans or like getting certain colors. Um, I feel like I, with the color palettes that I use don't involve uh, a lot of the colors that they have in this palette. So like this palette has a lot of warm colors. I do like warm colors, don't get me wrong. Um, but there's like so many different like red, orange, like it's mostly like oranges. Yeah, I think there's like two yellows and stuff. Let me open it since it's like right in front of me. Okay, yeah, no, I'm looking at it now and um, yeah, there's two blues, two yellows, two greens, one color that's kind of like a yellow, but it's kind of like a light brown. And then there's like a medium brown, a dark brown, an orange, a red, and a white. So I personally, um, you can probably tell like based on my aesthetic and probably based on previous art that a lot of the colors that I like range from like reds to blues. So like red, blue, purple, pink. What can I say? I just, I'm a sucker for those colors. They're like sky colors, so they mean a lot to me. They're very precious and just like a lot of fun energy comes from them. I will still use the other colors, but I just don't need as many of them. You know, like I don't think I need like almost three yellow colors, you know? Um, or like even two greens. I don't use green that much. I would love to if I can get used to it, but I just don't really, I don't know. She don't be using green. I don't know what to tell y'all. <laughs> um, it's, it's a nice color and I do like nice rich greens as well, but yeah, I feel like we could have done without as many duplicate colors. And when I say duplicate, I don't mean it's exact same shade, whereas like you get with like alcohol markers. I mean, like it's, it's like this, it's, a, it's within the same family. It's like different hues with the same family, you know? So I think I would replace some of those colors with like a purple, like just a natural purple, because any purple that I do here, I have to create on my own. Uh, like using this palette, it's, if I paint with this palette, I have to make my own purples and I can only get so many. I don't know. I haven't really tried out um, like the spectrum like the range of this palette and I feel like that would be a good thing to do as well. I don't know if other people do that. I'm assuming they do. I feel like I've seen it before but like just testing out the range of like all the different colors you can make with a palette I feel like that'd be really helpful. Oh and I will say um I mean my like uh, my palette probably didn't look that clean to you guys but you have to keep in mind this thing I've had this for like years so I recently cleaned it and made it look all nice and stuff um and I was like oh my gosh why did it take me so long to like properly clean this like I put it under like the sink and I just kind of like lightly rubbed over it because there were I mean there's still dents and stuff in the palette since I've used a lot of the colors and like that's what you want you want to be able to use it thoroughly but um, definitely take time to clean up your supplies. <laughs> um, it really just kind of helps make things feel a little bit fresh if it's been a while of you using it. Um, yeah, it's always good to look after your stuff. Oh, you know what I just thought of? I should put together like a personal like artist mood board or something for watercolor um, and sort of like gather up different pieces uh, that look how... Like they capture what I kind of want to bring out in watercolor because I feel like that'd be pretty nice, you know? In general, I feel like people should do that. Um, I, I mostly think about an art style whenever I think of like an art mood board because I've done it before, like a style study, but like basically you take different art pieces or an artist's like artist body of work, um, but multiple and you kind of compile it um, and it's all like 
your favorite things like oh i like the way this person uses lighting or i like the way this person chooses colors and you put it all together um and sort of like see if it can help you sort of figure out what you like and what you want your art to be like i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> hopefully you understood what i was trying to say but i want to try to do that for watercolor because um there's a ton of artists that um i love the way that they use watercolor and lots of wonderful pieces out there using watercolor so um i feel like that might kind of help me because right now um because i've been so in and out of it sometimes i forget like the qualities of it and um like the range of how it can look so i would definitely like to see um i would like to put together some examples on like oh, okay this is kind of like the look that i like or this isn't the kind of look that i would want to go for but maybe this looks cool i don't know you know that's always like super fun to me is like finding discovering different artists and finding like different forms of inspiration or resources you know there's a ton of them out there so just gotta make sure you utilize them i will say for me like what i've learned so far with watercolor is like um just a couple of things like one patience <laughs> definitely um you need to be patient uh at first i would make a ton of mistakes back then um because i just wouldn't let the paint dry and even now sometimes i'm pretty stubborn with it so um it definitely keeps me in check whenever i make those mistakes i'm like oh okay yeah maybe i should have waited for it to dry yeah um, but also just like efficiency things so like um, while you're waiting for certain things to dry you might be able to work on a different area or things like that um, and also like the best way to work obviously with watercolor the best way to work is from light to dark um, and objects in the background are a lot easier to take care of than objects in the foreground um, yeah I mean I guess for the most part I want to say that makes sense like taking care of the background at least for me it helped just now because then um that's kind of out of the way and then i can uh flesh out more of the forms up front what else um oh another thing is let's see like the oh i already talked about the paper quality a little bit like how you it's good for you to like get a feel for the paper and things like that um, and whether or not it's hot press or cold press or like if it dries fast or um, if it allows you to blend or if it stains, things like that um, really goes a long way. Good Using good paper in general apparently is probably like the most <laughs> important factor because you can have good colors and good brushes, but if you don't have that, like if you don't really understand the properties of your paper and how to use it best, then mayhem will ensue but um that being said i will say like even though this uh even though this like paper dries really quickly and it has like um features that i wasn't like used to i will say i love the texture something about it is really like stolen my heart um i still want to try out hot press and i believe i bought um some pads with both of them uh but I feel like something about the texture on this is just so, like, uh, it's just like chef's kiss. I just love looking back and, like, seeing how the colors wash over the texture. I don't know. Just, it really does something. Um, another thing that I need to learn to, like, uh, I, I guess, like, chill out on sometimes is the way that I use uh, colored pencil or, like, the way that I sketch things before i uh paint <laughs> because uh you probably saw at the beginning like i have a habit of like still shading with pencil i love like pencil and sketching so much that sometimes i forget that it's counterproductive for me to be shading with the pencil um if i'm going to paint over it if i'm going to use if i'm going to color it at all you know so i need to be careful with that <laughs> um but it 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 doesn't get too bad this time and line art usually takes care of that depending on if like how um heavy-handed you are but just something to look out for um and then planning is also very necessary i'd say uh i feel like watercolor especially if you're doing like an illustration um planning is really important i like the bigger the illustration the more you probably want to plan things out or like the more serious an illustration the more you would probably like to plan things out um i do think things could happen like all the all the cards can fall in place 
uh, just on a whim sometimes, especially like the more you improve at watercolor, but um, it doesn't hurt to like plan things out and just get a feel for like um, what you what colors you might want to use and like mixing those colors too like i said you don't want to be like me and make the mistake of like not uh having enough color to go around and then you have to like recreate it and then it's like slightly off and then you're like oh god what did i do <laughs> uh yeah so i've already taken measures to get a bigger um watercolor like like the little like flower i guess like what you um mix the colors in and the water and stuff so uh we'll see how that goes in the beginning uh for the water you probably saw like these two little uh mini jars those are actually like food seasoning jars that i repurposed because they are just the perfect size for um putting my water in uh, so, of course, I have one for the dirty water and one for the clean water. And um, so after I use, like, um, a color and say I know I want to switch colors, then I wash it out in the dirty water and then I wash it out in the clean water to make sure it's fully good. Um, but I try to make sure that all the pigment is off before putting it in the clean water. <laughs> that way um, I get a nice, fresh, watered brush. You know, love that. Um, so yeah, now I am going in with the line art and I show you the real time really briefly and then it's sped up because once again, I just, um, in general, I feel like I'm a little bit slower when it comes to, uh, making art. Uh, it's something that I'd like to improve, but I'm not like too concerned about it since I want to make sure that like, you know, I'm doing things properly but I think at this point I kind of got a little bit lazy like doing the braid pattern I was like whatever <laughs> to be honest I probably forgot the proper way to do a braid pattern to begin with so might need to revisit that because there's different ways but I feel like I just kind of wing it these days oh bars okay sorry <laughs> anyways oh another thing is um that the colors appear a lot darker whenever I first place them down and I need to stop freaking out whenever I see that. Like the colors always end up so much lighter than what I expect but whenever I'm painting I'm like oh my god these colors are so dark what have I done? Oh I've tainted everything. Oh what have I done? I can't go back now because it's dark and this is watercolor you can never go back with the darker it gets. Ah and then yeah it's like it's like someone turning a light on by the time I finish. <laughs> Yeah, so I am learning a lot. Um, it's been a nice time and I actually don't mind how this illustration turned out. Uh, like I said, I love the way the texture looks. Towards the end, I take off the masking fluid and like replace it with uh, like a copper. First, I try to use like a copper paint pen, but then I use my uh, Liquitex acrylic ink and um it doesn't turn out flawless to be honest in general the, there's like the background just looks a little bit messy but overall i feel like like this was really helpful for me to attempt so yeah i'm i'm content for my first attempt <laughs> in a while at least so uh yeah you can look forward to more watercolor videos i'll try out different things I would love to play with masking fluid again and finally get it down so if you guys have any tips i need to look up on that but yeah actually just yeah if you guys have any tips in general um let me know let me know in the comments how do you feel about watercolor is there any like product that you like specifically with it there are many things to figure out but we will leave that for next time uh as it's towards the end of the video so <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed your time here today, please feel free to leave a like. If you're interested to see more of my content, you can always check out my other videos and subscribe. For reference, if you're new, I am Rhea or Etheria, and I like making art and art-related content on my channel. I do try to post weekly videos, but if you'd like more timely updates, you can always check out my other social media linked in the description and also at the end of the video. I keep posting stuff on Instagram, so have fun with that. Um, on stories though, not the actual, yeah. Anyways, once again, thank you so much for watching and I wish you a nice rest of your day and week. Take care.